everyone, welcome to my garden. Today it's super windy. I mean, I guess it's not so bad. We decided to go ahead and do this video anyway because uh, we are going to get lots of rain this after this evening, and I think it's going to be raining probably next few days after that. And so I thought, you know, I, first I need to get this project done. Uh, I need to plant a few things, and I'll show you here in just a moment what I'm doing. But also in the meantime, I have a few things that I kind of like to show that's going on in the garden that are blooming at the moment. And I thought if I wait <laughs> for, you know, in a few days, they're just not going to look good anyway because we are going to have lots of rain. But so today I wanted to show you what I'm doing really quick. So this is our front bed. Right Right here and this bed is still developing um, last fall I planted several things in here uh, like this hookahs I have a midnight uh, rose I have wild rose hookahs that are really pretty and brought really nice purplish color and then I planted some Japanese anemones here also uh, along with uh, roseanne geranium roseanne which I, I am uh, growing to absolutely love. Uh, this is the first time for me to, I don't have any hardy geraniums, uh, two, two, two varieties th that I have in the garden, but they haven't really performed that well for me to really um, see if I really like them or not. But um, so far, I really like the Roseanne anyway. So I have Roseanne and I have several um, Eurasimum. It's a, it's a perennial wolf flower, Eurasimum. Uh, bull moth that has um, really beautiful kind of uh, amethyst color flowers. It seemed to me that they actually do need more sun than they are getting here, so I might move them um, maybe in a, a bit more sunnier spot. Although many of you guys, if you have been following my videos, you know that I am saving to remove this large big tree because that's where my um, uh, garden shed is going to go so I can get all my stuff organized there. Uh, in the meantime, while we have um, uh, the guy who is helping us to cut the tree, I'm hoping to ask him to uh, lift the canopy of this tree a little bit uh, because it has overgrown since I started gardening here, watering, and this tree has really overgrown. So I need to get this trimmed a little bit and hopefully we'll get more sun maybe you know shortly not not too long later anyway so today um, what I wanted to show you that last fall I also planted um, David Austin roses here this is a Judy Dench uh, shrub rose uh, it has a gorgeous apricot colors so uh, anyway I planted five of them where well, two of them has been mislabeled and so uh, one on the end and one right here. You can see they're already bloomed and spent. That's how I realized that they're wrong, wrong. It's a wrong plant. So I'm going to remove them. I ordered two more that needs to be. I'm, I have to replace them with the actual David Austin rose. Uh, so that way I'm going to have a grouping of five here. And I'm hoping as they start branching out and getting full, hopefully it will bring really beautiful, nice drift. So this variety of the rose, it seems like it doesn't require too much sun. All roses require sun, but, you know, it can benefit from a little bit of a shade or filtered sun. So if I think as soon as we lift this canopy of this tree, more sun will arrive here. And hopefully this will help the roses to perform a little better. Although I did have several blooms already of the ones that I was planted here before. So they're actually not bad, even the way it is now, it seems like. But again, if we lift this up a little bit, bring more sunshine in and I, or more light, um, I think they will really do well here. So here, I wanted to show you uh, David Austin Rose, Judy Dench. This one, this is the shrub rose that I'm basically planting here. It's five of them. Um, they just arrived about a couple of days ago, um, so they this one is a little small, but they usually look they have really beautiful blooms. Now this one is a little bit older bloom, so you can see it's already um, changed from this nice peach apricot into more of a pinkish color. But I'm not sure if this one has maybe blooms that are a little more th that are new, so you can see the color of it. Oh, and this got broken apparently from either wind or from the traveling so that's okay though I'll get that here in a second but here you can see it's really actually beautiful rose 
So I think this is going to be very pretty for me. Um, they do get, you know, nice and bushy, so it would be really nice to fill this area. Also, I have a couple of clematis that I'm going to plant here. Now, they're kind of small. They're small, but they're, they are going to be blue, they're blue clematis, and um, they called sapphire indigo. Now, I heard, and my research says that these guys bloom quite a bit. They have a pretty long, a long uh, flowering season, but they do belong to group two clematis, which means that you can't really trim them all the way to the ground and then try, and then you know, they will not come out. They will probably, but they, that's not how you, tr you know, group two needs to be treated uh, group two usually has nice large flowers and they do bloom on old wood and on a on new new wood or new growth so all you need to do is just really trim the tendrils and then uh, just let them be they they really don't ha need a lot of maintenance just make sure all the dead is removed just like any other plants so but the most attractive thing about this particular one Two, uh, two things actually. One that has a long flowering season. Second, they are uh, they don't get really big, so they get about a meter and a half tall and about 80 centimeters wide. So I think if I have a, just a small trellis here, uh, right in between those roses, just in a sunny spot. Now this area gets a lot more sun, and you can see this tree right here is dead. So hopefully when we can get uh, during the time when we remove this tree, hopefully I can cut this tree also. I don't think I'm going to remove this entire stem. I think what I'll do is just remove the top because I have a jasmine going on it. And maybe what I'll do is just have it covered with a jasmine here because honestly there's nothing I can plant here when this is cut anyway. So it might be just, it maybe it's just easier to just let it be because it's going to be stumped there and I can't can't really grow a new tree or anything not at the moment anyway uh, it will take probably a long time so I might just do it and also what would be good is you know when this is removed hopefully I will get a lot more Sun here but this is the sunny area because it gets really nice Sun in the morning and then fades away then in the afternoon again I get another flash of Sun so this climate is uh, what I hear they don't like to be in a complete full sun all, the, all day long. I think they probably will benefit with a little shade. And so what I'm going to do is uh, plant three clematis right here. And then I will move the woof flowers into the sunnier spot. Um, so anyway, I think that blue will always blue always looks good with almost anything and it will look really beautiful with the apricot and peaches and we sit here a lot so I have lots of clematis and most of them are kind of farther in the garden. I kind of like to have one that, that is here in close uh, close where we are sitting so that would be really nice to just kind of enjoy and see the clematis here. Um, so that's the plan for today and then I'm also planting some salvias which is up there and we will go see that here in just a few minutes and I found this uh, salvia nemorosas and they're, go they're blue I don't even know exactly what color they are because it's not specified I think they're blue but I don't think they're dark blue um, but they were such a good price in a garden center not garden center at the little uh, near us we went there for grocery shopping they had it and I decided to just go ahead and get some and pop in the garden, which, you know, I have lots of little places that need plants. So, but I, right behind you here, I wanted to show you this rose. This is a Mademoiselle Mayant, I think. I'm hoping, I hope I'm saying that correctly. But um, anyway, this is beautiful rose. This is one of my favorite roses. And got affected. Some of my roses did get affected from the long period of rain and cloudy weather. They're recovering. They're doing okay. I can see the new growth are, you know, starting to come healthy. And then also, uh, I'm I'm very diligent in cleaning my pruners to prune all the roses. So I kind of stop the disease from spreading everywhere and you know getting kind of hold of it and not letting to spread. So um, it's they they all starting to get better anyway they're babying right now but um, this is very beautiful rose this is a hybrid tea and it has this it, it just glows it's you can't even it's almost so corally pink that it's hard to even describe the 
color, but it is stunning rose. I might need to plant more of them in the garden. They are stunning. And I have this one other white rose hybrid tea. Now, this one I got in the market very, very early on. It struggled a long, long time for me. It never really did good, but I knew that it has a really nice, large, full flower, so I kept babying. This year, you can see it's doing pretty good. I'm really happy. It has affected a little bit, but, you know, for the most part, you can see all the new growth is coming out, you know, clean and uh, healthy, so it's doing good. And then my climbing rose has the second flush of the flowers. Look at that. Look at the color. Isn't this just a gorgeous color? So, see, this one also has affected a little bit. Not, not terrible. Wind has damaged it. We got lots of wind. It hasn't been really that great of a weather in a way. I mean, I've been very happy because I haven't been watering too much. But, you know, we haven't had that much sunshine for the plants to really perform. But this one has new shoots coming out, lots of buds again, and it's stunning. I love this one. And this one has struggled for a while, too starting to do much better and the containers are doing good I got this hose out because I'm going to start working here in just a little bit uh, you know how I planted this euphobia here if you guys been following in this containers that we did to, uh, in my couple of videos before um, and it's coming it's, it's doing really good it's holding on its own um, I think it gets more sunshine here than here so this one you know, I'm hoping to start um, go be a little more vigorous and try to pop a little bit. But it's okay. It's doing okay. But I, I like this one, though. The sun always helps because it just kind of spreads around. I love that. Okay. So, uh, and then I wanted to show you that the hydrangea incredibles are um, blooming. Beautiful. They are starting to they're not fully fully open yet but you can see they are already have lots of blooms on them they are doing really good they always make me so happy when they i love i love this hedge i have several in here and it goes all the way up towards the pergola and that you know if many of you guys are following my videos the pergola area is still very developing area that's my last part of the garden kind of in this area anyway and um, so this pathway basically just takes us to that destination and then here I the peace rose is open George took a picture yesterday and we posted it on the community uh, and it seemed like everyone really liked that this is a peace rose hybrid tea and uh, beautiful beautiful hybrid tea rose so gorgeous I am looking to uh, looking for to find um, Chicago piece I had one in Colorado I loved it it had more of a kind of amethysty pink um, flower I think coloring on it colors the tones so I kind of like it but anyway I, I'm having trouble to find here find one here in Europe I think it's a US variety I'm still searching if I can get a hold of it I would love to have a Chicago piece but this one is just gorgeous and the hydrangeas are looking really nice here and these containers I love how they turned out I really didn't I thought it was just going to be kind of jumble of everything but having to bring different varieties in this container turned out so beautiful the salvias are starting to take off euphobia is such an amazing plant anywhere you plant just it just brings this amazing interest and then petunia is doing really good this dark against the yellow and uh, daisy, uh, the zebra daisy is doing really well. So I don't know. I love these containers. They're just really interesting this year. Looking really, really fun. Um, hybrid tea roses here again got affected, uh, but we are treating them. They are doing good. These are beautiful hybrid teas. Look at this. I mean, they are gorgeous. And they stay a long time on a bush too. This one is... Um, the name of this hybrid tea is Boreal. I think I'm saying that correctly. I'll put that on a screen. Um, and the creator is Tom Tao. I think I'm hoping I'm saying that. It's a Japanese, he's Japanese uh, breeder. And then we have um, we have our climbing rose. Edith Piaf is starting to have, you know, another flush of flowers this year. Um, this rose hasn't been here for a long time yet. It's still kind of 
trying to figure out its own way, um, but it's it's looking really pretty. And then I don't know the name of this climbing rose. This is a gorgeous. I love this one. It's the most beautiful roses. I'm thinking this might be Ro um, Rosanna. I'm not sure because there was no... Uh, and it has a beautiful scent too. I love the fragrance. So this one, uh, there was no name on the label, but I am thinking this could be Rosanna. If you are, if you're familiar with this one, if any of you guys recognize this rose, please let me know the name. So this is a beautiful one. I love it. Um, and then Sir John Bitchman roses, shrub roses, are doing really good here. They are coming, and I love the color. Color is stunning. They are doing really, really good. They're, you know, a little kind of, they're not upright. They're not looking up. And I'm not sure if they're going to stay that way, they kind of bent a little bit, or they will uh, eventually, you know, get a little stronger. But we'll see. They are beautiful. I love them in this area. And this is a Ruby Falls um, Red Bud. Um, I always wanted to have one. I think it's going to be beautiful here if it starts growing. I have to see. <laughs> it hasn't lived yet, but, and I've been complaining. I wrote uh, that it's been, you know, it's, it was dead probably when it arrived because I take really good care of my plants. Um, I, I emailed them. I haven't heard anything from the company, but I was talking to my mom on the phone, and I was talking, to, to telling her about this tree, and I kind of didn't want it to do anything, but I, I was very convinced that it's dead. So I broke a piece, and I looked, and it's alive. So <laughs> maybe it's alive. I'm not sure, so I'm going to let it be and see what it's going to do. If, if uh, after a long period of time it's not do, going to do anything, then it's not. But it seemed like it was green in it. Um, so yeah, this area is doing good. Containers are doing good. We, the lantanas are always just such great plants. And uh, here where I'm going to plant salvia. So I have some salvia nemorosas, nemorosas, leaf, nemorosa. And you can see they come with, into, in so many different varieties. But it's not specified what this is, what variety this is. Uh, <clears throat> I'm thinking it's not probably not going to be really dark one because I saw one of the plant, one of the flowers kind of started um, shooting out a bloom, and I noticed that it's not very dark. But they see this one is just really dry. Um, they really need to be planted up here. So um, anyway, this is kind of where I want the salvias to go. Maybe, I don't know, maybe one. Anyway, I'll figure it out. But um, I think I'm going to bring it here because here we have we have red. You can see here this is a lobelia cardinal, and I love them. I have to plant more of them. They have this gorgeous foliage, red foliage, and uh, I love the shape of them. I love how narrow they are and how spiky and strong. So they're they're very beautiful, and I think the yellow. Uh, uh, um, Privet that we planted here uh, in my, you know, a couple of videos ago, and with the blue, it's just going to bring really beautiful, uh, beautiful um, look to this bed here. And petunias are doing good; they're filling in. You can see that we planted; they are doing really good. Um, I, I'm not great with petunias, but I've been feeding them. I hope that that was the case. And uh, here I have a black bakara uh, rose that is. Um, blooming doing good it has been affected a little bit but i'm keep cleaning and but you can see the foliage that it's coming out just recently they are all looking healthy and clean um, there's another new rose open here this is beautiful rose this is a hybrid tea this one i didn't care for last year that much i am loving it this year this is um princess Farah hybrid rose hybrid tea rose and it's beautiful uh, i think as it starts maturing it will do really well um next one one more thing that it's open that it's new today this is a lady gardener david aston rose which i am really impressed with i honestly in the pictures are they are so light in a color that i was really not sure if i should even get them at all but I have to say I they are beautiful and they have their that special 
kind of, I don't know, glow in them that is just stunning. So I think they will do really good and they're beautiful. I'm very impressed with them. That was a nice surprise for me this morning when I got out. Anyway, I think that's all what's going on in the garden at the moment. Um, the um, magnolia trees, these are little jam magnolia trees, and they are doing really good this year. So they really struggled for me last couple of years. And now you can see they have several buds. One is already finished and they have really large, like a, a, a f white flowers, like a southern magnolia. And uh, But they do require lots of water, it seems like, for me anyway. Um, so they are doing really good, and I'm hoping they get tall and kind of a block or um, give a privacy from here to here and because I, my idea of planting these trees to create another garden room here so I'm hoping that I can cr cut them like a hedge a little tighter and uh, have them grow over the arbor and kind of create a, in, in an interesting green wall here that's basically the idea and then I have a hybrid tea here the yellow hybrid tea that is open at the moment I wanted to take you around and show you. Uh, oh, and walking by these containers, if you remember, we planted the dahlias and I, with with the Dusty Miller, and I love them. I, they're filling in beautifully. I think they're be they are coming around really, really pretty. Uh, and of course, the yellow hybrid tea rose here is looking really beautiful i love this variety this is beautiful hybrid tea and i think this i purchased this from the garden center and it turned out really really nice so yeah anyway that's all go what's going on in this area this is a developing area and i wanted to just say that i uh, ordered the hedge fotinia hedge as you can see fotinia hedge here i'm going also plant the fotinia hedge on this side and then make a trail on the back a little bit so this there's a lot to be done but at least the hedge will be in uh, we got a new arbor that is uh, has gone here i already stained the color of this uh, you know the pergola so george will help me today to uh, place it more straight into the more permanent spot because I have a climbing rose colette right here I'm hoping that this will c basically climb up and cover this entire thing probably so that would be really nice you know interesting uh, another interest here and then gothieras that we planted here in this container or, or in this um, uh, bricks that I designed here last year and around the edges this is gothiera and it's beautiful this is an evergreen Green. I decided to plant them and you can see how many blooms they have look at this they started blooming and honestly I thought because they're such a woodlandy plant I thought it would be too hot in the Sun but they actually performed really well I've been giving them you know good amount of water make sure that they um, continue to naturalize and fill in in this uh, in these bricks really well uh, but they have lots of blooms this means that I'm going to have lots of red berries for the Christmas time coming which is going to fill this area it would be really beautiful uh, hopefully they will start see how much they already filled in I'm hoping for them to just kind of start spelling a little bit and having all these gorgeous uh, red berries for the Christmas time it will be really good really really pretty and if I wanted to put some in a arrangement and you know something like that that also that actually uh, also will be really nice as well all right well this is kind of what's going on in the garden um, let's go ahead and get this roses in I, I can't wait to get this roses planted and then I'll come back and get the, the salvias into the ground and and I think that will be all for the for today of course I mean not for me just for the video because I still have a lot to do uh, I need to work on my pergola area today get some digging I have lots of weeds that it needs to be pulled out and uh, I'm trying to work the soil with the sand a little bit because I know the hedges are coming and I need to start lining them so I want to go ahead and get ahead of it and prepare the soil for uh, for them to arrive and then hopefully I'll we'll make the video and show you when we plant all the hedges I'm excited about that all right let's go
Okay, so at least this part is done. After this, I have to go and plant all the uh, salvias up there. But I um, just wanted to show you really quick that I got the roses in. Look, it, it, they look amazing. I think, I think this is going to be really beautiful. So I planted a clematis, one here, one in between these two roses, and then one right here. And honestly, this part is going to be the sunniest area of the garden. Of, of this area this uh, bed basically because as we go farther in uh, there is more shade because there is more trees there it's kind of a woodlandy but this part does get quite a bit of a sun it's enough I believe that for the uh, roses and clematis to perform especially if I can raise this a little bit more and um, so and I also forgot to mention that I have planted a Mexican orange uh, trees here that I have three there is one right here and these are very beautiful it has kind of a limeish color they're very small still but they actually have put on growth you can see um, this year and then uh, one on the on the end of the bed and then there is one in the center right here so they will actually be evergreen so this bed will still have some evergreen elements in a um, in the winter time also you can see I lined them with some boxwoods uh, I have hookers which are also evergreen and then I planted uh, right in the middle I planted um, um baby blue um eucalyptus sorry i planted a baby blue eucalyptus which you can see it has uh, have some growth here and it's a little shadier area i think for eucalyptus to have that beautiful blue color but i think at first i was really worried i thought well maybe they're just really not going to do well because this is kind of a borderline area for the eucalyptus but they actually have to put on nice growth you can see here um and then the other one is also performing quite well so i'm hoping that uh, having this canopy uh, raised up I will get more sun and the uh, eucalyptus will actually blo uh, you know really fill in and uh, create this kind of a, um, stru a nice structure right in the middle and bring that gorgeous blue because I adore the eucalyptus blue color and also will go really well with the purples and apricots and blues so everything should uh, kind of uh, do really uh, good um, uh, it resonate together really well in this band it, as it starts maturing so that's kind of what's going on here I think this is all will fill in right now there's not a much going on because everything is so small but eventually I think this will fill in and look really beautiful so that's kind of what's going on here let's go up there to the next bed and get this salvias in because they're super dry I watered them this morning right before even I started the video but the wind is um, it's not really heavy wind, but it kind of comes and goes. And w when we have so much wind, they really need to be hydrated constantly because it dries out so fast. So uh, the Slavias are struggling. I know that for sure. So we'll go ahead and get them into the ground, plant them in. I'm excited.
Okay, so I planted all the salvias. I'm so happy they were able to go into the ground because they, they were just really struggling in a container. And I think this is going to be really pretty because I have all the blues, I have the red lobelia. This is a perennial lobelia and they're, they're amazing. They're amazing plants. I need to plant more of them. Um, so I have two here and then I kind of made a drift of kind of right here in between everything else. And I think this bed is starting to fill in and look really nice. So anyway, this is all what's going on in the garden at the moment. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you have any questions about what I did today in this video, please don't hesitate to contact me. I love reading all your messages and staying connected. Um, so have a wonderful week. Don't forget to subscribe to my videos if you like them and also share with your friends. If you like, if you know people who love gardening, just share my videos. I would appreciate that very much and that helps me to continue gardening. So um, have a wonderful week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.